I didn't understand until I was an adult what she meant by sacrifices. She was not a tiger mom. She was a suicidal mother. This film and your work often draws on your relationship with your mother. And I wonder, despite the fact that you've interrogated that so much as an artist, was it different to sort of see it in a documentary context? Well, you know, film always has this effect of amplifying drama. And so when I see these scenes that were put together about when I'm talking about, say, the time my mother tried to kill me, um, you know, I I felt that emotion again that I, I had that it's no longer just me giving words out about what happened. I'm seeing it. And I'm also wondering, because it is so visible, literally visible, how will strangers, people I don't know, respond to this um, aspect of my life? Hello and welcome to Variety's virtual studio at this year's Sundance Film Festival, which is brought to you by AT&T TV. I'm Brent Lang, Variety's executive editor of film and media, and I'm joined today by Amy Tan, the subject of the new documentary, Amy Tan, Unintended Memoir, as well as the producer, Karen Pritzker. I guess to begin with, I first of all, congratulations on, on being at Sundance. Um, but I, I suppose it's it's something of a bittersweet moment for you because sadly James Redford, who who directed this really amazing documentary, um, passed away. So I wonder if you could both just speak to that uh, the fact that that you are here uh, celebrating what is sadly I think maybe his final work. It is a beautiful testament to friendship all the way around. Amy's friendship with Jamie, which really shines through in this film. They really had a strong connection. This was not a drop-in piece. This was something where two people who had actually a lot of empathy and similarities uh, came together. But Jamie had the task then of convincing me to do this because at the time that I was, that Jamie mentioned this, I was trying to wind down my public life and become a private person and not do things anymore, let alone a whole documentary. But it was it was a lot about trust. It wasn't just that he hammered this into me. The more we talked, I realized that this was an amazing opportunity already to talk to somebody about very deeply personal matters. And I don't think I could have done that with very many other people. The film also talks about Joy Luck Club and what a huge phenomenon it was, despite the fact that it was a big critical and, and commercial success. Uh, there were no other uh, Hollywood movies and, that were contemporary settings with a largely Asian American cast. Why was there a decade, two decades long or more gap between that and say Crazy Rich Asians? The thought is that these movies are not gonna make a lot of money. There's specialized in a way. Joy Luck Club made decent money, but it wasn't the kind of money that would make people say, let's do another one. You know, we can make this even more successful. And the reason why they made the movie in part is that the book was surprisingly successful. So I, I hope there are more films. Um, you know, African-American films made the breakthrough for people being able to have different cultures, you know, and have them be commercially successful. And so I hope that happens. Amy, you were saying before that when um, when Jamie approached you about doing this film, you were wrapping up uh, your time as a, a public person. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so I may I may have misquoted you slightly. Why were you ready to kind of retire that that part of your of yourself, your life? Um, you know, I never dreamed of having a public life or having a bestseller or any of these things. And uh, it, I, everything was given to me and it was, it changed my life in so many wonderful ways. But there was a part of me that just wanted to be carefree and not have expectations placed on me. Private life also allows me to really think a lot more about what I want to write. This is not at all to stop writing. It's to give me more time to write. Uh, so that was the thing. You know, it was just, I want to do this. I'm 
putting things together for what I want to do the rest of my life, you know, packing away certain things. And then Jamie comes along. We end up having a lot of great conversations and I kept finding more and more things in my garage. You know that, Karen. (laughs) Oh, I do. (laughs) Yeah. It was, oh, I have these photos, you know, (laughs) then, oh, I went in my garage and I found all this, uh, this old memorabilia or guess what? I just came across two boxes full of videos. Uh, And digitized. Digitized. That's what I mean. (laughs) The word digitized, digitized so that I could actually see them again, including an interview of my, I did of my mother and he put in the film and it was so touching to me to see my mother after all those years with this interview I'd done. Well, you know, because Amy has so many wonderful things, the, the movie isn't just Amy sitting in her living room, you know, talking. What is so beautiful about the film is very dynamic. It has the, the past and the present woven together. So the film has a lot of animation used in a really elegant and beautiful way, I, I think. What are you hoping audiences will take away from, from watching this? I do think that beyond this being a documentary with me as the subject, that is that idea that we all have the story to our lives and and we choose how to look at that narrative to make sense and define the meaning of our lives. You started with so many difficult things, but also some really lovely things. You have, you, your mother did actually also really love you. And, and that comes, that really comes through. She would have been so proud and she would not have censored anything. All the things that I talk about there the really, really difficult things um, that uh, most people would consider unflattering. I would have to say, you know, people think that they've seen uh, glimpses of my mother and me in uh, the book or in the, the movie, but what they got was Daisy Tan Light. And what this movie does is Davy, Daisy Tan Expose, Daisy Tan Full, Full Daisy Tan. She was crabby and cranky and she was wonderful and had wise things and all of that and really cared for me and worried for me. But she also had a suicidal tendency, you know, tendency to, to try to kill herself, uh, an inheritance from her, her own mother. But anyway, just want to assure people, my mother would have been so happy if she had been able to see this documentary. Well, Amy, and uh, I, I, I really thank you both for joining us. Yeah. It's a fantastic film and congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank, thank you, so you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.